Hi uh, there, Yorktown third grade students. It's me, Mr. Crandall, from school, and uh, today we're going to be doing math, and we're going to be doing lesson 8 3 together. So uh, eventually you're going to need your math journal. You're probably going to want a, a piece of paper and a pencil for this first problem. So uh, go ahead and press pause while you get that stuff ready, and then uh, unpause it when you're ready to rock and roll. All right, speaking of rock and roll, I think I'm going to try to sing uh, this first problem to you. More like country, though, than rock and roll. Joanna packs 16 bottles of juice into cartons. How could she pack the bottles so each carton has an equal number of bottles with none left? This is not going to work. All right, I'm just going to read you the problem now instead. All right, so uh, Joanna... Pack 16 bottles of juice into cartons. Uh, how could she pack the bottles so each carton has an equal number of bottles with none left over? Show your thinking using pictures or arrays, and then write a number model for each of your representations. Okay, so let's just think about this problem a little bit at a time. What's Joanna doing? She's packing 16 bottles of juice into cartons, and they want you to pack the bottles so that each carton has an equal number of bottles with none left over uh, and then you're going to be uh, writing out some uh, pictures arrays and write number models to match your representation so go ahead and press pause and work that problem out 16 bottles of juice uh, into cartons with none left over so you're trying to defy uh, divide equally 16 so press pause and do that so let me show you uh, a couple of ways that you may have done that. So she's got the 16 bottles of juice into cartons. She wants to do it equally. So uh, one thing might be to just split it into two groups. And if you split it into two cartons, then you're going to put uh, eight in each. One, two, three, four. This is number four over here. Five, six, seven, eight. And then in this other carton, these are the weirdest looking bottles, but I, I don't like to take the time to actually draw, you know, bottles. If it's talking about bottles, I'll just draw X's or circles or whatever, or whatever this thing is. So, uh, all right, so there's eight in each. There's two cartons times eight bottles in each carton, and it equals 16. Does that match the problem? Well, yeah, it does, because... There were uh, 16 bottles. We could also think of it like division. 16 bottles. How could she pack the bottles so that each carton? So 16 divided by... <laughs> so hard to click and draw these things. Divided by 2 equals 8 in each carton. And if you're like, but Mr. Crandall, I did it another way. Great, there's lots of different ways you could do it. You could do um, one carton with 16 in it. One carton with 16 because 16 divided by one, you know, 16 bottles divided by one carton would give you 16 bottles in that one carton. Uh, you could also, whoops, that's supposed to be a 16. You could also write that one as one carton times 16 bottles equals uh, 16. Uh, maybe you did it as eight cartons with two in each. Maybe you even did four cartons with four in each carton. Four for this carton and four for this carton and four for this carton and four for this carton. Because four times four equals 16 or 16 divided by four equals four. What we're going to be talking about today are finding factors that would match a problem, finding factors. So we're going to be talking about the big number, which is the, the product when you're doing multiplication. We're going to be discussing which factors can be used to make that product. So here's another problem that's very similar. How could you pack 10 bottles of juice into cartons so that each carton has an equal number of bottles with none left over? If we wanted to think about this like a fact family or a fact triangle, we're trying to figure out some factors that when multiplied would give us 10. All right, so 10 
time, or excuse me, 10 divided by something equals something, or something times something equals 10. And we all know that like you can do 10 times 1, or 1 times 10, and that would give you 10. Or the other uh, possible factors, looks like a story mountain there, um, cross-curricular stuff here. The other one could be 2 times 5 equals 10. So you could pack those, uh, or just flip that one around and do 5 times 2 equals 10. So you could do uh, 10 cartons with one bottle of juice in each seems wasteful. You could do one carton with 10 bottles in it, might be a little heavy, or you could do it another way. You could do two cartons with five bottles in each, or five cartons with two bottles in each. Um, just probably depends on how big the cartons are and how big the bottles of juice are. But the, that's what we're going to be working on today, is identifying some factors that would make these products, okay? Let's try another one. This one is going to be in your math journal. And when I say another one, I mean a whole another set. This is in your math journal. It's lesson 8-3. It is page number 259. So get out your math journal, page 259. Press pause if you need to get to the right page. So we're on page 259 in our math journal, and let's read the directions. It says, for each problem, fill in the blanks <clears throat> with different factor pairs that make the number sentence true. So we're looking to make eight, and uh, it's different factor pair. So we're not going to be using the turnaround rule, but let's see. 8 equals something times something. Well, I know that 8 equals 8 times 1. I know that's a fact. Um, what's another way to make 8? Oh, how about 2 times 4? 2 times 4. That would work. Hmm. Let's move on to the next one. 18. 18 equals something times something. I mean, we all know we can just do like 18 times 1. Uh, but I want to think of some other ones here. Uh, let's see. 18 is even, so I can divide it by 2. So what is that? 2 times something equals 18. 2 times 9. And 18 is a great number because we can also use 3 times something. 3 times, let's see. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. Oh yeah, 3 times 6 equals 18. Very cool. 27, ooh, 27, 27. Um, and I, I'm going to just go with 1 times 27. And then should I do 27 times 1? No, I shouldn't because it says to use different factor pairs. That would just be the same pair, 27 and 1, flipped around, the turnaround rule, the commutative property of multiplication. Uh, but there's another one, and it's uh, 9. 9 times 3 equals 27. 9 times 3 equals 27. What about 36? <laughs> What about 36? Oh, I know that there's a uh, that there's a multiplication square that equals 36, and that's 6 times 6. 6 times 6 equals 36. Um, and then I also know that there's a times 9 problem that equals uh, 36. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 36. So 9 times 4 equals 36. Very cool. Very cool. Ooh, 45. 45. Oh, I know that 9 times 5 equals 45. And then I also know about like time, like 15 minute jumps. I know that 15 minutes times 3 times would be 45 minutes. So those are some, there's other uh, factor pairs that would work too. Those are just the ones that I wanted to do. Now, if that all seemed like really fast, um, Part of that might just be like not knowing our multiplication facts that well. So feel free to practice your multiplication facts on Extra Math or on Moby Max or any of those ways. Maybe you find something else. Not multiplication.com because those are just games. They don't even do multiplication. You guys think you're so tricky playing that 
at indoor recess time, but we're on to you. Uh, all right, now let's check out number six. It's a, it's a story problem. The Kim family is serving dinner for 24 people. Mrs. Kim could have one table with 24 people, that's a big table, or two tables with 12 people each, also a pretty big table. What are some other ways that Mrs. Kim could seat 24 people in equal groups at different numbers of tables? Hint, think of factor pairs for 24 and use pictures, words, or numbers to show your table arrangements. Uh, for social distancing, you might want to do 24 tables with just one at each table. Um, but that doesn't sound like very much fun. Uh, I think let's let's pretend like this is either pre or post uh, coronavirus. All right. So uh, let's see. Twenty four factor pairs that can make twenty four. Oh yeah yeah yeah. I know four times six. So I'm gonna think of um, you know what most people can get a hold of a card table that's just whoops that's just like a square and can fit four people. So let's say this is a table for four, and then a second table for four. That seats eight people so far. Uh, four, eight, 12, 16. Oh, that was 12 actually. This one makes 16. So there's four, eight, 12, 16, 20 people seated, 24 people seated. They're, they're all set up to play Euchre too. So what are some other ways we could do it? There's one way. Um, another way we said would be to do the turnaround of that. Tables of six. So four tables with six at each table. I think that would work too. So those are ways that Mrs. Kim could set up some tables. All right, let's do a few more of these. Um, this actually goes into what you did the last math lesson, 8-2, which uh, was about expanded, uh, what was it called? Extending, oh boy, how embarrassing. Yeah, extended facts. So um, I'm looking at 200, it looks a lot like 20. So I'm gonna think of ways I know to make 20. I know four times five equals 20. So I'm gonna think of this one as four times 50 equals 200. Um, I'm also going to think of another one of 20 times 10, because that would equal 200 as well. 720, ooh, what fact do I kind of know that looks like 720? Those would be uh, things that would equal 72. So let me do a... Uh, um, 72, I know that 9 times 8 equals 72, so I'm going to say 9 times 80, whoops, not 30, 80, home row, 9 times 80 equals 72, or, uh, man, let's say I get paid $720 per week and I work for one week, that would be 720. All right, so that was your uh, factors, of, factors of products practice, and uh, then we're going to do some math boxes in our next video.